So I suppose we should start off by saying I got some uh, good news and bad news. It's been decided, apparently. Uh, it wasn't my choice, but uh, Danny Machuca is gonna start taking over most of the Monday night class. So all the people that have been here, perhaps you've seen it, he's done two of them now. Um, which means I'm still gonna try to do the openings. I'm just gonna have to like fight and be like, come on, you gotta let me do my openings. I'll probably do a bunch of top tens. I got, I got some stuff in the works. Um, but this is not a joke. I wanna tell you what Danny's doing. So you have to be here because he, he doesn't wanna tape. He doesn't wanna be on YouTube, that's fine. Um, a 16 part series, this is not a joke, on the Nimzo Indian, people, you've both been there, you've been there, right? Yeah. Um, some decisive games, a few. So week one was game, some game from like 1912, Nimzovich, uh, 81 move draw. It was okay at the beginning and you know, uh, but you know, he's like chess is a draw. It was a draw, perfect game. So you can expect a lot of that on Monday night. We'll try to, we'll try to convince him to tape it. But uh, today, in sort of Danny's honor, I thought we'd find a draw. I'd go uh, just for him, but we'll, we'll look at an exciting one. So this is a game that's often called the immortal draw because it's so spectacular. And this is the game between Carl Hamp and Philip Mittner, and it was played in Vienna, 1870. Um, so this is the Romantic era where people were sacking their pieces and there was wild swashbuckling attacks and Okay, whenever somebody sacked the pieces, people would always accept. And all right, those games from that period are, are usually fantastic. Normally now people defend better. <laughs> so, but, uh, but okay, it's fun to watch. And even though this game was a draw, Danny's favorite, it was very exciting. So people that like to see some spectacular chess should be uh, excited about this game as well. Okay, the game began rather normally. And now we have the Vienna game. Okay, not the most popular move, but certainly not a bad choice. Uh, bishop c5, again, not the most popular move, but you know, that's, it's fine. And now a strange move, uh, knight to a4, and not a very popular move. So, okay, I mean, every, now every beginner in every book and every video always says, don't move the same piece twice in the opening. And this is no exception. So already a strange move, it's only been played about 20 times or so. But it does lead to some wild and crazy complications. Because Black, in a nice, aggressive, romantic spirit, decided, I'm gonna go in for this sacrifice. So already, you know, move three, we got some fireworks on the board. Uh, and what's this all about? I mean, is this, is this just a piece? Okay, in comes the queen. And so already White has to make some, some tough decisions here. You really don't wanna play a move like g3 because after we take here, we're, we're forking both of these pieces. So, I mean, okay, what are you gonna do? And a brave, brave man, the white king decided to step up and defend the pawn. Uh, as you would do, does this look like all of your games? No? Well, you don't have your king on e3 by move five? Add a few, maybe. Add a few moves? Um, yeah, so fantastic stuff. Yep, it's like I'm up a piece, but uh, the compensation is, is pretty obvious. Uh, the king is, is already running around. In comes a little check. Okay, I scoot over. And black obviously wants to really open up the position and crush the white king before white ever gets all of his pieces out. So in a dream world, you know, the king has to f go find safety somewhere um, and we gotta get our pieces out and we're up a piece. But um, d5 so real aggressive trying to open it up there's obviously a, a pin here so we're not just taking on d5 and okay i guess i guess i'll ask the class what you guys would play in this position because it's already you know every move here is pretty critical when you're you're running around with your king you got to play very accurately black so black just played d5 and now it's white's turn so is anybody uh have any ideas? I think I'd play queen f3. Queen f3, okay. Interesting move. Uh, we'll go ahead and have a, have a quick look at this. Um, unfortunately, it looks like I can just take here. And okay, you have to take with your queen, right? Yeah. And then I, I suppose I can snatch this or I can even consider yeah. playing this move here. Um, so that was not quite it. Protect what? Protect, Protect the pawn? Yeah. 
Okay, how are you going to protect it? Um, queen e2. Queen e2. Okay, so I mean, initially it does look slightly clumsy. Um, some of the placement of some of your pieces, but okay, you, you protected your pawn. Uh, I suppose I'll just make a normal looking move and I don't know, sometimes I play knight to b4, sometimes I take on e4 and then have some tricks. Um, it seems it seems all right, but I don't know, I, I still I kind of prefer black, just because in general principle, you know, I don't want to put this, look how clumsy, I mean, all these pieces are. Um, okay, so not, not quite what was played. What was played in the game was a little more accurate. So does anybody... Knight c3. Okay. This move uh, is actually a mistake. So, but it's very tempting. You take the piece that's on the side, it's not doing anything, you put it back, you defend. But here, black has a very strong move, taking on e4. The idea being, if you take back with your knight, we pin you. Okay, you defend. And it's similar to the other time where we were removing a defender with, with a piece. We can take here and grab this guy. And now black is up a pawn and the white king is still embarrassed. So black is clearly better here. You're still moving your king around. Black's, at least for the moment, up material. And uh, I mean, with the king still running around, you're, you, there's no compensation here for, for white. So with that in mind, I mean, that's, that's obviously a very tempting move. In the game, the king decided, okay, I just keep walking. And he'd really like to have a lot of time, a3, maneuver the king to a2, get all the rest of the pieces out, up a piece, yay. So that's what white is trying to do. But okay, black said, I'll take this. Um, attacking the knight on a4. And in the game, he just kept going. Uh, I protect my knight, I'm closer to a2. But uh, he actually missed a good chance here. So for a couple of moves, for a move or two, there's actually chances missed here by white. White actually has a really good continuation here. He can go d4 with the idea of just sort of blocking the connection here. And uh, only then going here. And at first blush, you know, it looks really good for white, but there is a trick. It does, you know, if you think about black, what he's going to do for his turn, it does appear that maybe, maybe white has made a little blunder here because queen e1 forks the king and the bishop on f1. So I will challenge the class. So this is not the game, but I will challenge the class. What would you guys play here as white? Because you're in check and I'm going to take your bishop. And it's, it's quite remarkable, so it's understandable why uh, the player with white didn't see this continuation, because it does indeed appear like, okay, white, you're just busted, I get my piece back, and I'm still attacking your king, and... Uh, uh, but we have this move, bishop d2. And it's like, well, I mean, I take your rook, right? And, and I'm still attacking your bishop. That, that feels pretty good for me. But surprisingly, after we calmly develop our piece, protect the bishop on f1, now the rook is protecting it, white actually has two threats in this position. The big threat is check, followed by grabbing the queen. And we also have this threat of taking on g7, which also wins material, and we get to start harassing the black king. So here, white actually would be a little bit better and, okay, possibly even winning in this position because he has two threats, and even though his king <laughs> is way up on c3, it's actually white that has you know, lead in development, he is up a piece, and he has very good chances to win this game. This was missed by the player, understandable, uh, so d4 was not played, but king b3, also a decent move, and black made a threat, knight to a6, threatening queen b4, checkmate. And once again, white had the opportunity to play d4, but he didn't do it. Um, and here after d4, if you take back, 
White can just consider either taking this knight or simply playing the move a3, and both of those continuations should be winning for White. Um, and okay, yeah, this idea of just blocking the connection, you give back a pawn, but you get to freely get all of your, whoops, eh, get all your bishops out. Uh, you didn't realize this bishop was attacking that pawn. Uh, oh, and the sound's on for Ben Simon. That's good. Um, but okay, yeah, so a move like d4 is a typical sacrifice, giving back a pawn to get your, your bishops out and get all your pieces out really quickly. But uh, again, it was missed, and he played the move a3. And it's, it's starting to look pretty good for white. Okay, I'm going to play my knight back to c3, tuck my king away, I'm going to piece up. And uh, here black played a really radical move, which might be a clue as to, to what it is. He, he does not want that king to escape. You know, you get, you get no chance to run away and consolidate. So what move did black play in this position? Queen c4, check. Uh, probably not the best move. Knight c5. I'll, I'll take it too. You guys keep giving me your pieces, I'll keep taking them. Okay. Okay. We're on the same page. So it's a really, really crazy move. And you put it on the computer, and at first it, you know, it's like, whoa, what a blunder. But you give it a little bit of time, it, it figures it out, and it's, uh, it's actually an okay move, you know? So, cr crazy, what's the craziest move you could possibly play? I think some people are afraid to say it. We, we played two of them, I thought. <laughs> uh, yeah, giving away your pieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's only sacking a three-point piece. You can do better. Yeah, sack the queen. Yeah. Okay. Queen takes knight. The king must come up the board. And again, the computer will tell you, yeah, black's just crushing it. But uh, with best play, this should work out. Uh, it should work out to be like maybe a little bit better for white, but it's really, really complicated. And the point of this move, obviously, was the knight goes to c5, uh, and your king no longer gets to escape. You must come up. You must keep coming out. And there's okay, t basically two choices. You're either going to go b4 or b5. Um, assen essentially, your two choices. And there is a difference. In the game, he went to b4. Uh, we'll come back to b5. I just want to show the game uh, so we can understand the differences. So here we go, king to b4, and we'll, we'll come back and see why king to b5 might be an improvement. And, okay, I'm attacking your knight, but check. Keep coming, just keep coming. Uh, come all the way up the board. I'll, I'll checkmate you. Okay, you can take the knight. And that's what he did. Uh, we can briefly look at this move, which leads to a very, very complicated computer forced mate. Um, so we'll just show this line check, bishop check. Uh, you can even have that. That's fine. I'll go here with ideas of going here. Um, just to illustrate, if the knight goes here, just some, some move we pass. Black is threatening a checkmate. Okay, you have to go here. And you can go to c5. You can also go to b6 with checkmate. So that's the kind of thing that he's, he's hoping to do. He's trying to catch the king in a mating net right in the middle of the board. Uh, but also, okay, you can go here, which temporarily prevents that idea. And all right, the computer will find you know, some crazy thing here. And it'll, it'll find, all this is like forced and it's checkmate and you know, 16 or whatever. So the computer, yeah, the computer can survive for a pretty long time, but then it eventually gets itself checkmated. Uh, which, okay, I mean, you didn't have to see all that. Um, and, okay, so I mean, yes, you can't even run away. Sometimes you can run away and it's a little bit safer, but black actually has a lot of chances to attack your king several times and force him back up the board. So he said, all right, let's take your knight. 
Uh, you're, you're slowly running out of pieces, so you better checkmate me or, or force a perpetual here. And all right, I'm going to take your deep pawn next. So he protected it. And the threat now is b6, and after you move bishop to d7. So that's the threat. I will challenge the class to see if they can parry this threat. There's only, only one move here. should be five check which is excellent um, so if you play a move like c6 you are weakening certain squares so this just isn't a very good move because uh, it, it gives my king some room and you surprisingly don't really have any any checkmating attack after that uh, so he played the best move okay i just move over and i i still have the idea of b6 looks looks pretty good um b6 checkmate is a strong threat so again, what is white going to do about that? In which which or, in, mind, mind, when you're in check? Yeah, I'm in check. Duh. Oh, we'll try. Ooh, we get the sound. <laughs> we got the sound on. There we go. <laughs> if the sound was off, we wouldn't have made that joke. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, somebody, somebody's nodding. Do you know? No, I wasn't joining. You're just enjoying the joke? Okay. Yeah, Ben Simon likes the, the little sound. <laughs> it's up really loud. They have, this is like Max. Can I make it louder? I like it too. What's that? I like it too. You like it too? Yeah, like <laughs> All right. I like Bishop C6. Bishop C6. Excellent. Yeah, the only way to avoid the immediate checkmate. So that was played. But B6 anyway. And, okay, you got the bishop out of the way of b5, so now your king can go there, only move. Knight takes. Take the knight. You have to take the knight. Uh, if you don't take the knight, the threat now is knight to d4, and when you back up, b5 with checkmate. Uh, and then even if you play a move like king a4, you still play knight to d4, and, you know, good, good luck stopping that. <laughs> so, okay, you have to take the knight. And what's, I mean, you're really running out of pieces. You know, just keep taking it all. And, I mean, how are you, how you going to checkmate me or force a draw with whatever you have left? Well, black found the, the best move here again. Again, you're, you're going to like this one. So at home, you may want to pause. I'm going to give it away. Bishop b7 check. Yeah, okay, what's this? What's that all about? Well, you, you can't take it. In the game, we got one here, and uh, let's see, there was a draw. So this is how the game ended. Let's back up so the computer... If you take this... Black plays king d7. Uh, you do have a check. Woohoo! But, uh, okay, I just move. And you really don't have any useful checks now. Which, oh, wow, how surprising. You, you can't check here. You know, none of these checks. You have all these checks. None of them do anything. Uh, so everything is just well prepared. And okay, just this is, this is coming. So very surprising you can't even take it. Uh, so he just backed up. And here, too, you have to go back to c6 and accept the perpetual. Because if you go here... Again, black has a very strong move. I'll, I'll give the people at home five seconds to figure it out. Uh, you can pause. And then I'll just give it away. Black can win the game here with the move. Bishop to c4. With a powerful threat of b5. Very hard to stop. So, okay. And so that's how the game ended. They, they repeated here a few times. And the game ended in a draw. Um, we will go back. We'll go back real quick to this position, this decision that white made here. And, okay, king b5 may look like it, it doesn't make much of a difference. 
But uh, let's see if we can, we can try to understand how this might be different if black plays the same way. OK. So I, again, the knight goes to e7, where it's protecting the d-pawn. But now I can play this move c4. And you'll notice you didn't have time to play the move a5 with check, which really, in the game, um, made it really difficult. The fact that you got this pawn here made it really difficult for white to escape in a lot of lines. So that was quite a useful move for black. So going back to king b5, um, we have time to play a move like c4. We're trying to create an escape route. We might take the knight. We might not. That doesn't matter. We're up so much material. We just want to not get checkmated. And so here, if d4, you know, sort of sealing some of the door, uh, black does, you know, again, get to make some really powerful threats. At some point, he has to toss this move in. Um, and, you know, it's looking pretty bad. You know, it might have these same, same sorts of threats. Uh, this is the same sort of checkmating net I'm trying to get you to walk into. But here, I have this move. Queen a4 check. And again, if you just move over, we can take this pawn. And remarkably, white gives back the material. And after a few more moves, he escapes. And it's actually white that probably has a slight advantage here. Nothing over the top. But uh, if white wanted to play for an advantage, he had to see this line where he gives up his queen. Though, OK, and then the game would still just be a fight. But as the way the game ended, it truly was an immortal game, uh, a very fantastic draw. So. OK. Uh, do you guys have any questions about the game or anything? No? All right. Well, until next time, uh, hit like, share, subscribe, and see you guys next week.